Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jim Park, and I'm one of the senior scientists from Milliper Sigma. Today, I would like to present our Celasic Onyx 2 microfluidics platform, which offers precise on-demand control over various cellular microenvironment, enabling dynamic live cell imaging. Here's our line of our presentation today. I'll briefly cover the basics of dynamic live cell imaging, as well as the challenges associated with setting up such capabilities. I will then give a brief intro to our Celasic platform, which offer turnkey-based solutions to enable dynamic live cell imaging with any existing inverted microscopes. Main part of the presentation today will be applications demonstrating the utility of Celasic, uh, with particular emphasis given to suspension cells, such as T lymphocytes, which play a crucial role uh, in immuno-oncology. Let's start with some basic uh, background information uh, on dynamic live cell imaging. I think by now it is very well established that live cell imaging offers tremendous biological insight over more traditional static imaging due to its spatial and temporal information. For example, let's take a look uh, at the static image in the middle of this slide. What you see in the middle of the slide is a bunch of T lymphocytes which are loaded with a green calcium indicator for us and dye. To simply put, uh, not much insight can be gained from such static image, perhaps other than what appears to be different level of dye uptake uh, as seen by different fluorescent intensity uh, among the T cells. However, if we are to take a time-lapse image of these T cells, as shown in the bottom of the slide, we start to gain deeper understanding and awareness uh, to the spatiotemporal dynamics of these cells at single cell level. In this particular experiment, T cells were kept at resting state and then activated with ionomycin to cause increasing intracellular calcium. Very important step in T cell activation. Already a couple observations can be made uh, which were not possible when we're just looking at the static image in the middle of the slide. For example, we start to notice that uh, the T cells are oscillating uh, in their calcium level during resting state. So they're going back and forth, they're getting brighter and dimmer. And also that there's a significant level of heterogeneity uh, among the T cells in terms of their calcium responses. Let's play the movie cell uh, to better appreciate what is going on. In summary, dynamic live cell imaging offer analysis of cellular events at single cell level as enabling study of population heterogeneity, study of cellular biology as a function of microenvironmental perturbations, uh, as we have seen in the previous movie here. Uh, for example, we can study the calcium responses of T cells before, during, and after their activation, uh, while we'll control when and how T cell agonies, uh, in this case, uh, introduction of ionomycin uh, is controlled. Other common example uh, would be dynamic gas control to create normoxic and hypoxic condition, and we'll go over that in greater detail later on. Last but not least is the uh, time dimension, where we now can study various cellular responses, such as morphology, velocity, signaling, uh, as well as the cell-cell interaction as a function of time to really obtain spatiotemporal information of any given biological system. So it sounds great uh, when we talk about live cell imaging, but then uh, let's take a step back and think about some of the challenges uh, in terms of building or actually buying a system which will enable dynamic live cell imaging. This is an image from Wikipedia and nicely demonstrates a uh, complexity associated with uh, such a system. Uh, these are very large and complex systems with high price tag, requiring well-trained scientists uh, to operate. Uh, also, in all cases, additional do-it-yourself components are required to establish perfusion and fluidic capability in order to create true dynamic imaging systems. Uh, these components, such as pumps and perfusion chambers, 
with associate controllers will further create complexity and increase associated prices. Now, I do want to point out that there are simplified versions of such a system that do exist. However, they're very expensive still. Uh, most of them are still well over 70K. And also, a simpler system tend to have a closed system, tend to be a closed system uh, with limited functionality uh, and capability. Switching gears, uh, then let's talk about our Salasic platform. It is a true turnkey product uh, with an integrated microenvironmental control system coupled to a microfluidics plate where cells can be cultured uh, and imaged on demand. A controller, the black box in the middle, is size of a typical 13-inch laptop in X and Y dimension. Uh, and if you are to stack up four of these laptops, uh, it'll become equal in height as well. It is extremely portable and it was built with a mobility in mind. Our platform offers software driver and on-demand control of temperature, gas, and fluidics of the plate, and starts making dynamic live cell imaging experiments possible. The software is extremely intuitive uh, and enables step-by-step -step protocol building where each step can be built with user-defined time, temperature, gas, and perfusion parameters such as flow rate. The plate has standard 96 well format footprint, uh, and the image in the center shows one of our plates preloaded with colored dyes to show individual layout uh, of the fluidics. Uh, in essence, it is a system of interconnected microfluidics channels with micro tissue culture chamber in the middle. As you can see in this cartoon, for each row, indicated as a group one, two, three, and four, all the individual well within the group are connected to micro tissue culture chamber via individual microfluidics channel, uh, which are basically the colored lines uh, for visualization. This enables up to four independent experiments to be conducted per plate. Uh, when connected to the controller unit via manifold, now, media or reagent in each one of these inlet wells can be pressed down via positive pressure. This will then move the media or reagent from that well into the micro tissue culture chamber. Essentially, this creates a system where any desired media or reagent can be precisely delivered to the cells in the chamber at desired time for specific duration and with specific flow rate. Since the plate can be temperature and gas controlled, we can now control cellular microenvironment in dynamic on-demand fashion. Uh, the bottom of the plate is also made of N1.5 glass for clear imaging, and you'll see the quality of our, our images in the later slide, uh, including the confocal uh, applications. Last thing I would like to mention is that since these are microfluidics plates, uh, we can also introduce specific micro-dimensional features uh, that are aimed at certain applications, such as imaging of suspension cells or maintenance of chemotactic grading. Let's talk about applications now. Let's start with the hypoxia application. Our system has two inlets to enable gas switching. For example, we can connect two tanks with 20% oxygen and 0% oxygen and switch back and forth between two gas inputs. Graph in the middle shows change in oxygen level within the micro tissue chamber as we cycle gas conditions from normoxic to hypoxic. We have introduced reverse fluorescent oxygen sensor, uh, RTDP, whose fluorescence is inversely related to oxygen level into our micro tissue chamber for fluorescent imaging. Y axis shows the fluorescent level of RTDP x-axis shows the time of experiment. We are indirectly measuring oxygen level with a micro tissue chamber within the micro tissue chamber as we change oxygen levels. And we are also looking at media with and without field of bovine serum, as well as the different flow rates uh, as indicated on the legend. As you can see, under normoxic condition, fluorescence within micro tissue chamber is very low. As we switch to hypoxic condition, fluorescence starts to increase, 
and within two hours, it reaches equilibrium. We can cycle this process. So if we switch back to normoxic condition, fluorescence will start to decrease and again reach equilibrium uh, within two hours. We can even uh, maintain prolonged hyperfluid conditions for 48 hours uh, or even longer. Graph on the right shows expression level of HIF1 alpha, key regulator of hypoxic response on the various oxygen level. Y-axis shows fluorescence of the reverse oxygen sensor RTDT, as well as the HIF1 alpha and nuclear DAPI staining. X-axis again, uh, time of experiment. As we switch from normoxic to hypoxic condition, uh, from T equals zero to T equals 180 minutes, we see increase in RTDP fluorescence, followed by increase in HIF1 alpha expression, uh, whereas the DPDP fluorescence uh, is, uh, sorry, whereas the other DAP fluorescence uh, is unchanged. Notice how the HIF1 alpha expression, which is the biological response, lags that of environmental oxygen change uh, as shown by change in fluorescence of DPDP. Uh, if we switch back from hypoxic condition uh, as shown, from T equals 180 to the rest of the experiment, we see oxygen level going up and the expression of HIF alpha disappearing with no change in DAPI fluorescence. Now let's look at intracellular oxygen level and how they're affected by hypoxia. Here we're going to use intracellular hypoxic probe, uh, BioTracker 520. This probe is highly cell permeable and becomes fluorescent only inside of cell uh, under hypoxic condition. Uh, image shows A431 cells loaded with and without the probe and subjected to hypoxic condition for 16 hours using cellatic setup that I just mentioned to you uh, in previous slide. Image on the bottom left shows the cells becoming bright green uh, due to the activation of the intracellular hypoxic probe. Now, uh, we'll show you the live cell movie uh, generated on the lamoxic versus hypoxic condition uh, using cell lasing. Another common live cell imaging application uh, is to study intracellular trafficking and morphologies uh, of intracellular organelles. Uh, here we're going to study autophagy response by visualizing autophism formation under, formed under hypoxic condition. Cells in this study express GFEP's LT3 protein, which localized to lysosomal compartment. Under normoxic condition, cells exhibit broad green fluorescence under hypoxic condition, cellular stress activates autophagy, uh, and then autophagosomes formation can be seen uh, as a distinctive intracellular pumpate formation. Using the cellulitic setup described before, we can cycle back and forth between normoxic, hypoxic, uh, and then normoxic condition uh, to study spatial temporal dynamics of autophagy responses. Let's take a closer look by viewing live cell movies uh, generated using cell lasers. Obviously, there's a lot more information uh, one can gain from understanding spatial temporal dynamics of protein trafficking. Uh, this slide summarizes the receptor internalization processes using A549 cells expressing GFP-fused EGF receptor. All culturing and experimental conditions were done uh, using cell ASIC. Of all, uh, the upper left image shows the broad membrane distribution of GFP-EGF receptor when cells are cultured in one of our plates. The image in the middle shows the initial change in the distribution of the receptor 
when its ligand, EGF, is introduced to the cell. The receptor starts to coalesce uh, along the membrane surfaces, followed by eventual uh, in receptor internalization and trafficking to lysosomal compartment where it produces that distinctive punctate formation as shown in the right side of the image. Again, let's take a closer look uh, with a lifestyle movie uh, of these processes. I mentioned that one of the advantages of microfluid plates uh, is the ability to fabricate small dimensional features aimed at specific uh, applications. Here is one example where we are enabling directional migration of cells while maintaining chemotactic gradient through small dimensional features. Figure on the upper panel shows the layout of the micro tissue chamber surrounded by two flow channels. The flow channels and micro tissue chamber are separated by micropolis barrier, which enables creation of chemotactic gradient when two channels are pursued simultaneously. The images on the upper right shows one channel, bottom part of the image, flowing with fifty solution, and the other channel, upper part of the image, flowing with blank buffer. As you can see, over time, there is a 50 concentration gradient going from bottom uh, to the top. Image on the bottom shows uh, chemotactic responses of HT1080 cells uh, using this setup. Upper channel has chemoattractant flowing through it. Bottom channel has corresponding blank buffer flowing through it. Over time, there is a directional migration of cells towards the uh, chemotactic gradient. Uh, once again, let's take a closer look. Another advantage of microdimensional feature uh, is to enable live cell imaging of suspension cells, a very pertinent feature uh, for something like study of immuno-oncology, where suspension cells like T cells play a key role. Unlike adherent cells, suspension cells pose a unique challenges uh, during live cell imaging uh, due to their drifting uh, and defocusing. Uh, images on upper left explains the design principle uh, for our trap plate. Uh, here we have introduced vertical pillars uh, with a ceiling height of 12 microns which effectively traps suspension cells in a single focal plane and prevents drifting and defocusing. As you can see on the bottom left with the image labeled regular slide, suspension cells are very difficult to focus uh, in general because they're non-adherent. If you look at the same cell captured under our trap plate, you can see all cells are in monolayer under single focal plane enabling quality imaging with the ability to track single individual cells. Uh, next slide, movie, uh, cell movie, will highlight uh, these features. We can take advantage of these trap features uh, and use syndexate uh, immune synapse formation uh, during T cell interaction with antigen presenting B cells, as an example. Uh, immune synapse formation is uh, not only important for T cells and antigen presenting cells, uh, such as B cells or monocytes, uh, but also it's critical during the lytic uh, cellular event between T cells uh, and the tumor cells for immuno oncology applications. Uh, images shown here are snapshots taken from lifestyle movie using track features to capture and image suspension T cells interacting with antigen-presenting B cells. 
Notice how all the cells are in focus, and there are no challenges uh, to track individual cells and study their movement and morphology at a single cell level. Uh, let's play the actual movie. Another example application of track plate uh, is to track suspension cell apoptosis uh, in real time. Here we are perfusing T cells with a NUCPU CAS PACE 3 uh, active apoptosis probe uh, and NX in 5. Upon activation of the death receptor uh, CD95, T cells will undergo programmed cell deaths. Images on the bottom are snapshots taken from live cell movie where T cells are undergoing program cell deaths upon CD95 activation. First, we can visualize nuclear condensation upon cast phase activation, uh, as indicated by the green fluorescence, followed by phosphatidyl serine expression on the membrane of the dying cell, as indicated by red fluorescence. Uh, let's take a look at the live cell movie itself. I would like to close by just going over two more live cell applications. Uh, one is a long-term culture capability uh, of cell ASIC. Two images are shown uh, of the neuronal cells from a 21 and four day experiments respectively. Indicated cells were grown for the specified duration on our plate uh, and then in situ immunostains with specific indicated markers to show that cells were maintaining their intended phenotypes. Uh, of course, during any time during the culturing, uh, the time lapse uh, can be taken using these plates uh, for the cell. We have some movies coming up for neural stem cell differentiation, uh, so please uh, stay tuned. Another application uh, is growing cells in 3D matrix. On left side, we show 3D MCF10 cells growing in cell AZ plates versus conventional uh, four-chamber culture slide uh, for comparison. In both cases, cells have formed a nice spheroid. Uh, this also indicates that it's possible to perfuse 3D matrix uh, that contains cells uh, in order to create cellular 3D structures using uh, our cell ASIC platform. On the left side is a snapshot taken from live cell movies of the growing spheroid. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the live cell movie. So this can also be used for non-live cell imaging applications. Uh, as I briefly mentioned before, after live cell imaging, cells in the microchamber can now be in situ stained. Uh, image in the middle shows the HeLa cell uh, that were stained after live cell imaging experiment using cell ASIC as an automated staining platform uh, using the setups indicated on the left side uh, of the slide. 
In addition to in-situ staining, cells or their lysate can be extracted for further downstream analysis, uh, such as flow uh, or for PCR and sequencing applications. In closing, we offer different plates with different dimensional features aimed at different applications. So please reach out to us for any specific uh, your needs uh, or your application. We'd be very happy to have conversations with you. And we also enjoy a growing list of publications in top journals. Uh, we have well over 700 publications now, uh, and they're still growing rapidly. And some of the recent publications are highlighted uh, on the right side. In summary, cellular biology is complex system uh, with dynamically changing microenvironment and cellular responses. Dynamic life cell imaging is an indispensable tool uh, to better understand this event. Cellasic brings programmable, dynamic, environmental control uh, to address this need uh, to cell culture. Turnkey ready to use microfluidics and micro sized chambers for precise regulation of cell culture conditions are possible with Cellasic systems. Growing suits of microfluidics plates enable investigation of a wide range of cellular responses. Uh, and as I mentioned before, if you have a specific questions for your application, uh, please, we'll be very happy to have discussions with you. Uh, with that, uh, I just would like to thank everyone. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, my name is June. If you have any questions, please reach out to me uh, at any time. Uh, we also have a trove of information on our website. Simply type in uh, cellasic.com in your browser. Uh, that is cell with two L uh, followed by A-S-I-C. Once again, thank you everyone for your time today uh, and look forward to hearing back from you.